Hello, friends, and welcome to the Patch 7.37D offlane tier list. Let's get into it. What are the good offlaners? Let's look at the ones. First off, we have Tidehunter. My take on this hero is that it is strong in metas where you need a big, fat, tanky guy to stand in front of towers and be unkillable, and you're basically just a wall. Not only is Tide not really able to do that right now because his numbers are not that high and the carries and the heroes that are being picked, there's like hyper damage heroes. There's Marcy, Marana with Solar Flare, Luna with her ult. Like all of these heroes do an insane amount of damage because of the Pipe Greaves meta. Uh, everybody's picking insane damage dealers. And also standing in front of towers is just not that important. If you TP to a safe lane tower to defend it and it's like, oh, I got you. Your five mana is now they can just portal away, and it's not like they're moving to some section of the map, and it's really screwing their farming patterns. Uh, so that playstyle is just not that good right now, and Ravage is a very long cooldown. That definitely sucks. Uh, Venomancer. This hero had a couple of, like, glimpses of being good. There was a bit of a jungle Veno thing when offlaners could be left alone uh, going on. There was a patch where uh, the innate was broken, uh, the one that gives you extra damage on your poison sting based on your base damage. Something like Shiva's Guard was applying three debuffs, and this damage was calculated based on the amount of debuffs that you're putting on your opponents. All of these things got fixed. Also, the Plague Wards, they got nerfed. The facet where you're putting plague wards on top of you and like cutting creep waves, that was the thing people were doing for a while. But like I said, they nerfed it and also people got better at dealing with it. So Venomancer looks very rough right now. Uh, okay, getting into the D tier, we have uh, Necrophos. They did just buff this hero. They decreased the cooldown of Reaper Scythe, which definitely helps out. They keep buffing the facet where you gain move speed based on the move speed slow that you're applying to people, which is obviously good with the Shivas and with his Ghost Shroud. However, uh, that facet still has an incredibly low win rate. They keep trying to make it work. It doesn't seem like it's working. Everybody goes for the other one. But I would say Necro's like big issue is uh, his laning. They also just nerfed Pipe Greaves. That was what people were going on him. That doesn't help. Uh, but his laning is really sus because you pretty much have to CS like perfectly in order to have enough mana uh, sustained from his Sadist now that it's been nerfed for spamming his Q uh, and HP also. The hero stats are f***ing awful. So you really need to... Um, play around Sadist very well. Razor, uh, same issue as Necrophos, and a lot of the heroes that have fallen down on the tier list have fallen down because Pipe and Greaves have been nerfed, and this is especially true for the heroes where Pipe Greaves was the only build that you could do. Uh, some offlaners that were good in the previous patch are still good because there are non-Pipe Greaves items that you can go for. Razor, pretty much in the offlane, the only build people were doing was Pipe Greaves into Bloodstone. Uh, Bristle is also one of the a or S tier offlaners, depending on who you ask. And so uh, obviously people are playing around uh, countering the Bloodstone because that's what Bristle goes for. So that build on Razor is just like a version of that. Uh, and then Pipe and Greaves are weak. I also don't think he's particularly sick against a lot of the carries. Like if it was a Juggernaut or like Lifestealer meta, then sure. But these heroes are garbage. You're playing against heroes that don't really care about laning against a Razor. Uh, the next two heroes, DK and Nature's Prophet, are kind of in the same boat for me, where I think both of these are excellent heroes. I think DK is a friggin' insane carry. Um, the build is Armlet, Sanj, and Yasha, a sometimes Mask of Madness. That build is griefing if you're an offlaner. And the thing with Dota for the past few years, uh, and maybe even longer than that, maybe I was just too shit back then to realize that it was like this, uh, but everybody's talking about this now, is that the meta is determined by the items that are strong. The heroes that are picked are determined by the items that are strong, not the other way around. And so the build on a hero is very important. The build on DK is what makes him strong. DK is not strong. It's the fact that people have found a build that works for him. That build is the red dragon form and carry DK with the items that I mentioned. Same with Nature's Prophet. People are going for like Glyp uh, they're going for the Ironwood Treant, which is giving you a ton of damage, spawning a Treant in a fight, not really split pushing with it, even though that's the fun strat to do. People are just using it for like extra damage, farming one side of the map, TPing to their team who are four manning somewhere else. That is strictly a carry play stop for this hero. But the reason I put both of these heroes in D tier for the offlane tier list is because they're good enough that if you are stuck playing offlane and you're good at these heroes and you're a carry player, go for it. You'll be fine. Darkseer, the big thing for him that they nerfed recently that hurt him a lot is the, uh, I believe it's his innate, which makes it so that his int, it can never be lower than his agility or strength. Now that is the average between his agility and strength. And what people were doing before is going for like four gauntlets to start the game, still having a ton of mana regen, still having a ton of mana, uh, getting extra damage from that, getting a ton of HP, basically like all the strength items were insane on Darks here. Now that it's average, he is not so good. People are trying to go for the other facet. It doesn't look that great. Pipe and Greaves both got nerfed, so Darks here is 
he's rough. Also, SD is like the best support in the game, and it completely f***ing owns Darks here because you just purge uh, all of his stuff with the SD ult. Vengeful Spirit, uh, I think this hero had a good couple of patches. They nerfed some of the stuff, like her missile, for example. Uh, I believe the stun duration, they like nerfed it again. They keep going back and forth on this one. But the big issue for offlane Venge is that she is actually decent once you get to the Ags, but you're waiting for 1,400 gold on a hero, or sorry, uh, 4,200 gold on a hero that can't really farm. And by that time, you're playing into some like Vlad's Drums offlaner that's already taken all of your towers. Like you've lost the game. The, the pace of the game is too fast to play Avenge right now uh, in the offlane. Dawnbreaker, I basically think that her innate and her facets are just not that sick. You don't really notice any of them. I, th I think um, she's one of the few heroes that like got the short end of the stick when it came to the facets and the innate patch. Uh, and then they didn't subsequently get buffed to the point where they're very strong. The build that you would do on her is like Greaves and Pipe. Both of those things got nerfed. Carry offlaners are not very strong. And I honestly think this hero is a lot stronger when like the Desolator and carry style Dawnbreaker is the style that you want to play in the offlane. But that is not how people play offlane right now. So you're forced to go for an inferior build, uh, which is made even more inferior because it just got nerfed. So Dawn is not so good. Uh, Broodmother, basically what really hurt this hero is they nerfed the Necrotic Webs. So you can't use it in other lanes and win those lanes for your team. Uh, and then also they made it so Bloodthorn does half damage on the spiders. That was the build people were doing on offlane brood. Sure, you can go pipe greaves. You can go for these like aura items, whatever. There's way better heroes for it. It's just not how brood really wants to play. Probably it's more of a carry hero. Marcy, I think this is like there are some builds you can make work with her on the offlane. Like let's say you're duo queuing and you want to like Marcy IO and cheese the game. You can of course do that. You can snap fire plus Marcy and you get the thing that makes you attack whenever your person that you're putting your buff on attacks. And that's like a cheese strat that you can use with a little shredder on snap fire. Cool. It's fine. Um, there's not that much you can do though. And she's not like a traditional aura builder. So once again, this is kind of just like playing a carry Marcy from the offlane. And then if you're playing around her abilities, having you Utility, I would say this is, or or you're playing around like her buffing somebody and giving them damage. You're probably better off just playing this as a four or a five. This is an excellent hero for four or five, especially with some sort of ranged hero in lane. Oakley Doakley. Sorry about the Ned Flanders. Uh, won't do that again. Moving on to the C tier, we have Viper. Basically, I think this hero is good since they made his innate give you damage based on how low the enemy guys are. Uh, that's great. But the build that I think is strong on him is Dragonlance, Mage Slayer, that sort of thing. That's not really an offlane build. However, the hero is so good in the other roles, uh, particularly mid, that I think that it's still probably a fine offlaner if you're a good Viper player. Legion Commander, I don't think this hero is that bad. It's just that she's not OP, and the way that you play her, which is Blade Mail, Blink Dagger, like you need these two items, is just not a super popular way of playing the offlane, uh, unless you're playing some hero, which we'll get to, that just has some like really OP cheese thing um, in like the mid to late game, uh, and then also like really strong laning. Uh, Legion is going to be stronger in a meta where she's laning against like anti-mages and juggernauts, these heroes that would cheese and win in other matchups, but then you pick the Legion, then you're like, well, fuck you, I can own you in lane. Those are not very strong heroes. Like the, the heroes that you're playing against, Drow Ranger, Luna, Wind Ranger, like these heroes are going to just own you. Um, it, it's more on like your supports. Uh, Legion is not really going to add that much to a lane. And her her facet also, the, the thing that gives her a shield, got giga nerfed. So that one is not as good as it was before. Night Stalker, kind of similar boat to Legion, where I feel like the play style, which is like he's blinking in and killing Crystal Maidens and Oracles and squishy heroes like that, uh, that's not that good. However, there are some games where like enemy team picks two supports that you can do that with, and then you also have heroes on your team that are going to want to build auras because Night Stalker is not going to build auras for you. Then Night Stalker is definitely viable. I would also say if the enemy team picks a Helm Dom 2 summon hero, then the Night Stalker Shard is very good against those heroes, and those are very popular heroes right now. So he exists in this weird category where against the right heroes, he's amazing, but against the wrong heroes, he's kind of useless. So that's uh, an interesting place to be for him. So if you get a, like a late pick Night Stalker, it's good. Brewmaster, my take on this hero right now is that they've nerfed it enough. They nerfed the barrel. They nerfed his ulti a ton of times, like... You need to be good at the hero. You need to be able to get out of lane. You need to be able to micro the pandas and the ult. You can't 
choose which panda you go to with the ag shard anymore. They remove that. Like you have to be good at this hero in order to make it work, but it's a good hero if you if you are a brew player. Death Prophet, they just buffed her spirits. They do more damage now. Uh, particularly in the early levels. That's great for her. The facet that people are going for is the one that gives you damage delay, just like Kunkka. Like, I was really sure that when they added that, this hero would be insane because the way you counter her is burst. And that damage delay just, like, cannot be bursted through. Uh, however, I will say that despite the buff being very good for her, the spirit buff, she is a Greaves Pipe Buyer. That is, like, the only build people really do in the offlane for her. And they also nerfed greaves and pipe in the same patch that they buffed her so it kind of is a double-edged sword there but she's still fine she's okay uh slardar this is a hero that's like similar to uh, let's see i guess like marcy or so she falls victim to a lot of the same things a lot of these other C D tier heroes do uh or she slardar uh, that's a he um which is the build that is good on him is like a carry slardar build like mask of madness uh echo saber a lot of people are going mage slayer right now when they do pick slardar and the nice thing about him is you can be like an unkillable tank, which sometimes is enough to mean that you don't have to have auras necessarily because you're like tanking so much damage, your team doesn't need auras. It can be risky though, but Slardar is still fine. Like, especially if you have a team that is building auras for you, then Slardar is great. Uh, I still think the damage amp lets you win any carry 1v1 right now. A lot of people are picking hyper damage just to like cut through the auras. So Slardar is good for that. But like I said, he can have this issue where like if you don't have aura builders and they do, you can just get run down and the hero cannot do what he could in previous patches when people weren't building auras. Uh, he's pretty much a carry from the offlane. Okay, moving on to the B tier. We got some interesting heroes in here, some that really piss me off. Axe, that's not one of them. Unless I'm PA building rapiers, then he pisses me off. Uh, the build on him is Bracers. Blade Mail, Blink Dagger, you're going to be cutting creep waves, you're going to be dragging it to camps, getting super farmed, super fat. You can farm faster than Legion in the early game. His laning is probably better than Legion's in the early game, especially with the uh, supports that are being picked right now in the four position. So I think Axe uh, wins out there. But really the reason that I think Axe is strong is because Bloodstone Axe is amazing. People are sometimes going for Blink, Blade Mail, uh, and then BKB Bloodstone if the game looks rough and you're not super far ahead. If you're having a good game and you can keep snowballing, then you can go for Blink, Blade Mail into Bloodstone. And then you go for the Aghanim Shard, which puts Battle Hunger on people when you press your Q. Your Q is larger because of the Bloodstone. Your spell Life Stealing for all of the damage that you're doing with your Battle Hungers. The Battle Hungers now stack, so you can use that twice. You can have three Battle Hungers on a guy. It's insane damage and you can have it in a big aoe and you're unkillable the bloodstone is basically what makes this hero so he's got a cheese build that essentially works for him right now uh magnus seb is spamming this right now he's playing a lot of offlaners and he has like a 60 something percent win rate with mag it looks really good basically there's like two builds there is still the harpoon build for skewering people back agnum scepter as well for skewering people back but also some people are just going for guardian greaves and pipe after blink dagger of course and it looks good the big difference that people are doing on this hero versus before is, that made it not D tier anymore is people basically realize the Q is very good with the Aghanim Shard. Pick up an Aghanim Shard. All the best Magnus players are getting it. It one-shots creep waves. It is super long range. It does a lot of damage, huge nukes and fights. You can set up for stuff with it as well. Like you can set up your own skewers easily with it. So Mag is actually pretty good. Pango, oh my god, this hero is absolutely tilting me lately. It is so tilting. This facet that makes it so that your turn rate is faster in his roll, and then the roll is faster as well. They just buffed it. It legit feels like this hero is scripting when you're playing against it. His ult is so good. It's so hard to play against it might end up actually being s tier as an offlaner there's a chance for that i've seen 33 playing it recently i haven't seen that many other offlaners spamming it but it's one of those things where maybe if like the build gets figured out the exact build it might be just busted but for now i'm saying b tier just because like i know it's good but people are playing it more mid right now but it's just such a busted hero it gets to go on the offlane tier list uh, underlord he's still good they just nerfed pipe greaves so i thought like oh underlord's gonna fall off a little bit you know they nerfed some of the carries maybe the heroes that underlord uh is very good against are not going to be good anymore now nah, the meta hasn't changed that much pretty much the only difference with underlord is people are more likely to go for greaves into crimson guard rather than greaves into pipe still the ability to like push out creep wave somewhere or farm somewhere that your team doesn't want to farm and then ult in and also spawn a bunch of necro units with the abyssal horde facet like that is it's bonkers you can play so fast in pubs it's super nice because you can essentially show up to your idiot team when they're taking fights get a kill trade like one for one in a team fight and then just go back through the portal and continue farming so you can kind of like make up for your team being 
and pubs, which is really amazing. And you win any lane. You just press, press Q on the wave. You're never going to lose lane because the wave is going to push in. You just stand in trees and, and press Q on the wave. Kunka, uh, they nerfed him pretty hard. They nerfed the damage delay on the rum. Much needed. I think the duration on it is what they nerfed. Uh, makes him easier to kill. However, still, the build of like Blade Mail into Crimson is excellent. That's exactly what Kunka likes to do. It's not like he really got hurt that bad by the Greaves nerf. Uh, the pipe nerf, sure. People were building the pipe on Kunka, but I feel like people are also looking for excuses to build Crimson because Kunka has great strength gain. It just feels really good on him. Aghanim Scepter with the two boats is still excellent. Does a ton of damage in fights. The cannon are a meme, but two boats is like already enough to justify an Aghanim Scepter, honestly. So Kunkka is still quite good. He's also a really good setup. This is the thing I really like about Kunkka is that he is set up on enemies. You can like kind of poke without jumping into the fight. You just press X on somebody and all, a lot of the time, like a bunch of enemies TP in because they're afraid and you've not committed anything. It's just an X and it's super long range. Primal Beast, he's extremely good. This is a, this is a very good hero. Trample is a really nice, like, non-traditional way of doing scaling damage. You can kill a lot of heroes, like Dragon Knights, Timbersaw, like heroes like, I know Timber's good against Primal in certain ways, but it goes both ways. Like, heroes that are unkillable because of armor and like that, Primal can actually munch through it. Ursa against his Enrage, use the Primal ult, it goes through status resistance for some reason. So there's just certain elements to this hero that make him really good in terms of utility. In the offlane, the build is probably like Blade Mail, BKB Blink still, uh, which means that I think that you probably want to have other aura builders on your team if you pick this hero, but this is like a better version of Slaughter in the sense that because he has the highest strength gain in the game, you do get an unkillable tank in your frontliner that is going to soak up a lot of damage. And I think Primal Beast requires, because he's better, a little more attention than a Slaughter. So you're definitely going to soak up damage. Uh, and then that's ex that's exactly why people build Blade Mail on him. It's like you have to hit him, but you hit him. Uh, you have to hit him because he's killing your team with Trample, but you hit him and he's got a Blade Mail, right? So Primal, solid hero. Uh, you have to be good at it though, for sure. Doom, uh, probably still like an A or S tier offlaner in terms of competitive but they just nerfed or fixed a glitch where all of his abilities were dealing 30% more damage. It was just supposed to be his auto attacks. They fixed that, so obviously that's a pretty huge nerf to Doom. However, Doom is very unique in the sense that you just click a guy and they're f dead. Like, the disabling healing since they added that, it's been insane. Also, the selling your items for 90% gold is very strong. However, it's better and competitive because you can tell your team, like, hey, I have Blink, let's go smoke, kill their carry. You sell the blink after you make a move with your team because Doom doesn't have enough damage on his own to kill people a lot of the time, especially with the nerfs. Uh, and then you sell it, get a Midas. And like you're playing around these timings, right? But that is much better when you have a team to help you play around the timing. So in terms of pubs, where he is strong is that if you think you're going to play, like if you're low MMR and you feel like a lot of your games are going late because people are just not ending the game, or maybe you're playing on a server like SEA where people just they like to go late or it's because it's like really chaotic or whatever. If you feel like your games are going very late, Doom still has like a gold steroid. Like he can still do that uh, where you just get super fat with like Octarine core and that sort of thing. And then late game, you have two Dooms and you just press their carry, and then they die. So that's still fine. But all of these things are very nuanced, and that's why I put him at B tier, even though I think he is actually a better hero than B tier. Moving on to the A tier, we have some familiar faces in the Sand King. Yep, this hero is still good. He was nerfed. They particularly, that I think is an important nerf, is they made Sandstorm so that it has 100% uptime on level 4, not level 3. People were maxing that anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. And then another nerf that hurts him is the radius on Sandstorm just straight up got nerfed. It's still incredibly good. Pretty much this thing being like right on top of you would probably still be fine within reason because you're building Bloodstone anyway, you're burrowing in, you're stunning anyway. Like you want to be right on top of people for all of his other spells. So it's still a good hero. It's just not completely imbalanced. The pipe nerf definitely hurts him. He's a Bloodstone builder though. He really loves Bloodstone and that item didn't get touched. It's still really good. So Sand King, yeah, he's fine. The Aghanim Scepter's bonkers in the late game, by the way. Lycan, oh my god. This hero is so infuriating to play against if it's a good Lycan. The facet people are going for is the Greater Wolves or the Alpha Wolves, whatever makes it so that you have only two levels in the other abilities, but you can keep leveling up the Wolves. Those things are so strong. They're impossible to kill. You put them on backline supports, and they're dead. It's like legitimately as if this hero was not enough of a nightmare to play against as like a squishy support. It is so annoying. Playing initiators against that shit, they're rooting you when you're trying to blink in. It's really annoying. Dom 2 is really strong right now. People are going for that. Vlad's Drums is like the popular item build in the offlane right now. That's actually, you'll see with the S tier, but what is determining what is strong with offlaners right now is 
who builds drums into Vlad's. And it's a rush drums, by the way, no boots into drums. Um, this is something that if you look at all the best offlaners in the world right now, they're all doing this. They're all playing the Visages, the Lycans of the world. And then you go to the tier below that, like the 9 and 8k offlaners, they're still building the Pipe Greaves heroes. It's a zoo meta. If you want to win a lot of MMR, play the zoo meta before people are caught up to it. Rush drums. It's insane. You'll see what I mean. Uh, and obviously Lycan really likes to build that. So Lycan might even be S tier. It's just not a lot of people are playing it. And I think the laning is a bit of an issue. That's like his only problem. But if you get past that, it's insane. Uh, Mars, none of the nerfs to this hero that have recently happened have any effect on him. It, you can feel barely anything. The Bracer nerfs don't hurt offlaners. Like you see Centaur is still here too, because these heroes were selling Bracers anyway uh by the time that they were like doubling in stats like you already kind of wanted to build other stuff it kind of actually felt like for an offlaner to sell the bracers because they were so good so that was more of a support nerf so mars is still exactly the same the facet that makes it so people can't see into arena is crazy good for fighting because basically arena is like a single target we're gonna kill this guy ability and then people can't save that hero. Ringmaster is really broken. SD is really broken. Oracle is really strong. Tons of save heroes are really good. And Mars makes it so that you don't have to go on the save hero and you can still kill people. Like he makes fights so easy. Uh, however, the issue with him is that he is not great against summons heroes and it is a zoo meta. So basically, if the Vlads and Drums were not good and it wasn't a zoo meta, probably this hero would be S tier right now. And if you're really good at it, it is still S tier. Bristleback. Oh my god, this hero. Another frustrating one. So people are going for the seeing red facet. Essentially, early game, this means that you don't have some, like, the other facets basically make either his Bristleback bad or make his ult bad. <laughs> Both of those facets suck. The seeing red facet doesn't have any downside like that. And then it makes it so that people are going uh, Sanjin Yasha late game. After you go for the Bloodstone, you do the regular, like, Bristleback, Aghanim Scepter, like, spell life stealing, diving the fountain, like that still happens but then late game you go Sanj and Yasha which helps that play style as well because of the spell lifesteal amplification the lifesteal amplification but then you press seeing red you press the ultimate and you're actually doing a load of physical damage as well so the hero does both it's really broken it's really farm dependent and that's that's the thing that if you have players if you play like duo and you have somebody who's like stacking for you or you're really confident that you can go stack for yourself and you like know that strategy and you're just going to do that and you think you can get away with it, it's really good. But if you're not doing ancient stacks, it falls off a lot. Like you really need to get that Aghanim Scepter bloodstone timing and then it's it's really broken. It's like Axe. It's a very cheese hero right now. Centaur, not as cheesy. Very strong against a lot of the popular carries. It's really good against Windrunner because she can't press Whirlwind. Uh, Centaur will kill her between his Retaliate, which people are maxing, and Blade Mail. Uh, you can go a bunch of Bracers, which is amazing for early game sustain and laning and that sort of thing. His ult is great for disengaging from Whirlwind, from Luna ult, from like a lot of the stuff that's really popular right now. His, his ult is good for disengaging. It's good for disengaging out of like a Doom as well. Uh, Centaur is still very strong. The nerfs to him barely had any impact. Timbersaw, the facet people are going for is the one that uh, has the little slow, like the little chips that fly off of a tree whenever you use your um, your W. It's very good damage. It's good setup for your abilities, like using that slow to get in there and throw your chakram down. It's uh, it's super noticeable. And the build is still, the build is actually, some people are going for Blink Dagger if there's a lot of like strength heroes, but mostly the build is like Mana Boots, Soul Ring, Double Bracer, Kaya into Pipe. And it's just like, you're a huge damage dealer, but you're also an Aura Bitch. Finishing off with the S tier, we have the ungodly broken heroes. Uh, we will start with Enigma. So he's been great since they made his Eidolons get some percentage of his HP. They're way harder to kill. They have a ton of magic resist, so they're super hard to burst for heroes. Vlad's Drums is the item build on Enigma, and it's the item build for offlaners right now. These are the aura items people were already going in the previous patch and realizing like, hey, this is broken. This is actually a faster timing than the Greaves pipe thing. Like, let's just pick summons heroes and go for the, the drums and Vlads. And drums rush, by the way. No boots into drums. People were already doing that. But then the patch came out and Valve didn't really have enough time to realize, like, oh, shit, this is really strong. People were playing the in qualifiers, uh, not in actual tournaments. Now in tournaments, you're seeing this a lot. So that didn't get nerfed. It's even better now relative to the Greaves and the pipe. Uh, you can play Enigma with, like, Marcy, Tusk. These are very strong heroes. And you set up, you body for Enigma, and you destroy the lane. The hero gets drums at, like, three or four minutes into the game, takes the tower, and then if you go try to fight him, he'll black hole you. He has crazy late game scaling because of black hole. He has summons that can push towers, and because you have drums and vlads, you can push towers even quicker. Like, the pace that you can set with these S-tier heroes is 
insane. And the reason that a lot of these uh, A and B tier heroes are A and B tier is because they're all Crimson builders. And the Crimson is obviously good against the summons heroes. However, it comes out so late that by the time you get it, you've probably already lost the game to the summons heroes. That's how good they are. Right now. Uh, obviously, pubs don't exactly work like that. People make mistakes. But in like a one-to-one, -one, if both teams are equally good, the summons heroes are going to win out. It's, it's really... Visage, especially this one. This this is like S triple plus tier hero. It is insane. The facet people are going for is the one that gives you gold when you kill people with soul assumption. They are maxing soul assumption. I've seen Gunner literally TP to a lane at five minutes in without birds, level five, just because he wants to kill people with soul assumption and get that extra gold. It is like multiple minuses in a single team fight. You are guaranteed to get your aura items faster than your opponents and the, the pacing you can set with this hero is insane. Visage Birds with a Vlad's and a Drums does so much damage to towers. It's crazy. So this hero is bonkers. And basically, the way people are making up for the fact that because you're maxing Soul Assumption, you're not going to have levels in the Gravekeeper's Cloak. If you feel like you're getting gone on, you just get Bracers. If you're not getting gone on, you get Null Talisman, so you can spam more Soul Assumptions. And both are good, because he's a universal hero. Hey, these three S-tier offlaners are all universal heroes. Go figure. Beastmaster. Um, so this is another hero where if you look at the best Beastmasters in the world, they're doing one build. If you look at everybody else, they're doing another build. Everybody else is doing still Aghanim Scepter and playing the Magic Damage Beast and going for the Facet, where you activate his inner beast, and every hit, you get a stack of axes on your opponent. The good Beastmasters are going Helmdom 2, not Aghanim Scepter. They're going Vlad's Drums. They're playing this like a typical summons hero, uh, and they're going for the other facet. That build has a crazy high win rate. The other build has a lower win rate. Still good, because Beast is strong. And BKB Piercing Disable has gotten a lot better also, which is also why Enigma is strong, because people are building hyper damage around one single carry, and if you can just disable them, you win the game. Uh, Beast Laning is also and insane and you can still farm ancients with uh, axes even if you go for the summons build so anyway there it is hello everybody that came to the end of the video my summary is vlad's and drums are op without boots go vlad's drums without boots drums first not vlad's first you probably do vlad's drums and that's good anyway that's it see you